We're going to check it a little bit. We're going to work through, this is actually a 2013 AP macro exam question. Actually graded this one last year. So we're going to talk about this. Okay, inflation and expected inflation are important determinant of economic activity. A, draw a correctly labeled graph of a short-run Phillips curve. I'll stop, draw it. Okay, hopefully if you've got it drawn, it's going to look like this, right? Inflation is the price of unemployment, and the curve is the inverse. In fact, if you have to, there's my aggregate supply curve, right? It's a mirror image of that. So, boom, I did it, and I label it short run Phillips curve. Okay. Now, it doesn't ask us to show the long run, but I'm going to do it anyway because it just makes me feel better. It gives me a comfort level. And I'm going to put full employment right there, and I'm going to throw a zero in just to remind me. Okay, draw correctly labeled. Boom. One point. Using your graph in Part A, show the effect of an increase in the expected rate of inflation. That means that whatever is going on, we used to expect inflation, say, to be 2%. And think about this being 2% right here. Well, now we expect it to be 4%. Well, that means at full employment, in fact, everywhere you are on that curve, inflation is going to be 2% higher. Well, where is 2% higher? Well, that's about right there. So my curve now needs to be here. Okay? Now, when that happens, there, of course, is a reasonable chance that you'll also, you know, you, you might actually end up being having greater, you know, greater unemployment. You might have a shift or something. But the thing they've asked you to do is show the effect, and the effect is going to be that curve is going to shift to the right. And guess what would happen over here on the aggregate supply? It would hurt businesses. It would shift to the left. So now we got a second point. What's the effect in the increase in the expected rate of inflation on the long-run Phillips curve? Here's why I like the fact that my long-run Phillips curve is drawn right there. What happened to my curve? Nothing. Okay? No change. Given the increase in the expected rate of inflation from Part B, will the nominal interest rate on new loans increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? Well, if you remember that the um, nominal interest rate minus inflation equals the real interest rate. If we expect inflation to change, if we expect it, well, this number, we know what this is. Let's say, for instance, that's 3%. Well, if we expect inflation to go up, in order for this to stay at 3%, nominal interest rates have to go up. Okay. Normally, we think about nominal, real following nominal, but that's because we don't know that we don't expect inflation to change. It changes without us knowing about it. Here, we expect inflation to change. We expect it. The key word there is expected inflation. So you've got to change this number. Let's say it was 2 and you go to 4. Well, the nominal interest is going to increase. So the nominal rate will increase. What will happen to the real interest rate? Well, since we already know we expect this to happen, we're going to hold this fixed because this is what we expect to earn. The 3%, we expect to earn 3%, so you give me the inflation number and I can calculate the nominal for you. Since we, we're all knowing, we're all aware of what that real interest rate is, we're aware of what inflation is going to be, then this is going to remain unchanged. Okay, And you're actually going to write that. Okay, You're going to write you know, D1 somewhere you're going to find. Now, my, mine's all messy, but you could... You could write D, little i, and it would increase. And then D, little double i, and it will be no change. Okay? No change. Okay, please don't make your answers as messy as mine are, but we get to talk. You don't get to talk to your reader. Assume that nominal interest rate is 8%. Okay, that goes right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change colors because it's so messy. It goes right here, 8. Bars and lenders expect a rate of inflation to be 3. Well, that goes right there. And the real GDP is going to go up 4%. Well, I don't see real GDP in that equation. So this is a distractor. Ignore it. Okay? 
8 minus 3, calculate the real interest rate. 8 minus 3 equals 5. That's your answer. That's a synopsis, a little summary introduction to the Phillips curve. Hope that helps. See you next time. Thanks.